I wish we all could uh, have this guy up in our head making more connections. Right, but. right, plugging it back in. We have, there are some theories on what causes Alzheimer's disease. It's an important thing to know that we don't know, and there's lots of theories about what causes it. Um, the newspaper will often say that they've discovered some new wonderful thing, and, mm -hmm. and indeed they have, but it's only a theory at this point. Um, the theories include environmental poisons. Uh, we're mm -hmm. living longer now, so we're in contact with some of the things that are in our environment for a longer period of time, and that may be affecting the brain. There may be a genetic influence. It may run in some families. There's a possibility, a remote possibility, that there could be a virus or a slow-acting infection in our body that we've carried for a long time that kicks in later in life. Hmm. Um, there is another irreversible dementia that works that way, so could Alzheimer's disease be that way too? We don't know yet. Um, and also they look at the possibility that the body's ability to fight infection has been impaired. Instead of fighting um, germs that will harm us, it now starts fighting normal cells that you know, are doing us good. Mm. Um, so they're looking at lots of things, but they don't know yet. Uh, John, I think we need to explain how this disease progresses over time. It's important to know that Alzheimer's disease is a progressive disease. It will worsen, as we said. And many times we'll hear stages described for the disease. And you might hear, uh, and you've probably heard some of these stages, Barbara, there might be three stages, there might be seven, there might be ten. And that's really not so important how many people say their stages, but to know that a person will progress through what seems mm -hmm. to be some stages. And today we're going to talk about three stages, and that's the early, middle, and late. Those are the three that we're going to describe. Alzheimer's disease can last anywhere from 5 to 20 years, depending on when it was actually diagnosed in a person. And each person will exhibit symptoms at different times. And I think the important message, as you've mentioned, is that Alzheimer's disease is an individual disease. It affects everyone differently. There's no uh, one way that it affects people. And it's important to know that and know as we're working with these folks that just because um, Mr. Jones and Mrs. Jones both have Alzheimer's disease, they're not going to progress the same way. So let's talk about the early stage. At the early stage, a person might still be living alone independently in their home. Uh, they might have a primary caregiver that lives with them, uh, but they're still living pretty independently. They might have some mild forgetfulness, uh, mild memory problems. I talked about that um, memory of yesterday or an hour ago that they might be having problems with. You may ask, did you send in the check for the electric bill? And they just did it last night, night but they don't remember doing it. Difficulty with newer complex tasks. Um, Paying the bills is another task that is pretty complex mm -hmm. for us. Mm -hmm. uh, balancing your checkbook might be another. And something that they always did very well at, now they're beginning to have problems with. And if you introduce a new task to a person in the early stages, they may have difficulty with that. Mm -hmm. And then finally we see um, a so social withdrawal, kind of a lack of initiative. The person just doesn't seem to want to get involved in anything any longer. Uh, they've kind of given up. Mm -hmm. And I think when you talk about depression, um, this early stage of Alzheimer's disease often has depression associated with it. Right. Or it certainly looks like depression sometimes. Right. Barbara, will you tell us about the middle stage of the disease? Sure. I think um, it's interesting, too, about the early stages that families often don't know it's happening as it's mm. happening. As they look back after the diagnosis is made, they'll say, oh, Grandma hasn't planted her garden for a couple of years, or Mom hasn't made those cookies or whatever. So um, it, the early stages are often identified better after the diagnosis is made than when they're going on. Very true. By the time they're in the middle stages, they're starting to have more and more problems, and they should not be living alone most of the time. Sometimes they go to live with their families or they may actually move into an assisted living kind of facility like the CBRF. Okay. In the middle stages, the person is more disoriented to time and to space. Um, a good example of this might be, big, like you were saying before, um, they may take their medication and forget they've taken it, so they take it again. And right. now they're overdosing with medication they should be having, but they're taking too much. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they can't remember if they've taken it, so um, they'll, they'll take it. Or they'll take another one, or they'll, they'll mistake one for the other or whatever, but they make mistakes with their medications. Um, 
or they may not be able to find the bathroom. They may still feel the urge to go, know that they need a bathroom, but they can't remember where it is. Mm -hmm. Once they recognize the toilet, they know what that's for. Sure. They can toilet themselves, but it's finding their way to it. They also have more language disturbance, where, where they'll have more difficulty understanding the caregiver's words. Um, they have more difficulty making choices. The wife may say to the husband, honey, what would you like for dinner tonight? And that's an abstract thought, and you and I might have all kinds of thoughts in our mind about how to answer that question, but it might be real overwhelming to come up with an answer to a real abstract thought like that. What do you mean by abstract? Um, good question. I guess um, abstract is when it's not real obvious to you. And if if I if the woman had said to her husband, "Would you like lasagna or a hamburger for dinner?" He can picture those two things are more obvious. Oh, but if she just says, "What would you like?" then he has to come up with decisions. Then it's more abstract. It's okay. harder to think about. Okay. Um, they'll need more supervision. They're just Judgment is more poor. Um, they may have been cooking at home alone, um, but they don't recognize green stuff growing on food and refrigerator as mold. Um, they may put something on the stove to cook and forget that they they've uh, left it there it starts to burn they smell smoke but they don't recognize it as a danger and so don't respond to it and the fire may actually start um, and then agitation may may occur in this middle stage and a lot of times I think it's because they're so overwhelmed by all the other things they can't control I mean um, it's real frightening to know that you you don't feel comfortable in a place you've lived in for 40 years it doesn't look familiar and the people around you don't look familiar and you you're not able to do things that you would do before could do before so you often will see agitation in the middle stages mm -hmm. well and finally there's the late stage of the disease and at this at this stage the person needs total care they're not able to meet any of their own needs and the needs must be met, met by a caregiver at this point many times folks need to be moved to a nursing home type environment they're not able to stay in that CBRF any longer and I think it's important at this point that caregivers anticipate the needs of the person with Alzheimer's disease. In other words, that person's not going to be able to ask for a glass of water. Mm -hmm. uh, they may know they're thirsty, but those connections, mm -hmm. uh, those extension cords aren't connected enough mm -hmm. to say, can I have a glass of water? So mm -hmm. the caregiver needs to say to that person, would you like a glass of water? Do you need to go to the bathroom mm -hmm. like you had mm -hmm. uh, just mentioned to it? Or even taking them to the bathroom because when they see it, they'll know what to do or giving them the water mm -hmm. because the water will be the cue that exactly. says, oh, I could drink. Exactly. And I think the goal at this stage is to make the person as safe and comfortable as possible. It's really all you can do at this stage is to just make sure that the person still has some quality of life as much as possible. Around the clock care is needed. Verbal communication is very limited at this stage. The person um, may only make noises rather than actual words or phrases. They may still uh, recognize the people very close to them but they may not recognize the grandchildren. Mm -hmm. Or uh, you as a caregiver, even though you worked with them for many months and you saw them yesterday, you'll come in today and they may not know who you are. Mm -hmm. And that's definitely a part of this disease and this stage. They're incapable of self-care of any sorts and they're incontinent, which means that they're not able to control their bladder or bowel any longer and they usually need some protection to wear because they're just not able to uh, hold even mm -hmm. their bowel and bladder. Alzheimer's disease unfortunately ends in death as we know and usually that death is caused by an infection uh, such as pneumonia. The person's so weakened that this pneumonia takes over their body and you and I might be able to fight off pneumonia even though we'd be very sick. We could fight it off and, and mm -hmm. get better. A person's in such a weakened state that they can't fight it off mm -hmm. and they die from that. Uh, they may not be able to drink or eat any longer and because of that lack of foods and fluids they also would die. Mm -hmm. In other tapes, you will learn how to communicate with people who have Alzheimer's disease. You'll learn how to adapt their environment and how to create meaningful activities for them. The things you do as a caregiver to create a meaningful and a safe environment are the most important treatment for people with Alzheimer's disease. Thanks, John. This has been fun. Thanks, Barb. It has been a pleasure.